This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The Mosaic Law was given to strengthen sin. Think of that. Strengthen sin. The Mosaic Law was given to give sin the advantage over your life to increase sin over your life, to bring about condemnation, to bring about shame, to bring about guilt, to destroy you and to make your life miserable, to bring you to a point where you'll finally come to the end of your self-righteousness and your self-effort and fall down on your bended knees and declare, I need help, I need a savior, Jesus! Men, it's our time to dive deeper at the 2021 Mentality Men's Conference. Join us online on September 10th and 11th for two days of dynamic teachings from Creflo Dollar, raw and uncut. You're about to receive real resolution in your life. So mark your calendars and register today. Simply text MENTALITY to 51555 or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. If you have your Bibles tonight, go with me to the book of St. John, chapter 1, verse 14 and verse 17. I probably read this about 500 times now. <laughs> St. John, chapter 1, 14 through 17. And then go to Romans, chapter 6, verse 14. And we'll begin to establish this. Now, tonight I want to talk about, of course, the, the new administrator of the new covenant, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will always be a better administrator of morality, always, than, than the Mosaic law. So, let's look at this together. Verse 14. Let's read verse 14 out loud together. Ready? Read. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, notice in verse 14, he's making reference of Jesus. Uh, and the word was made flesh, that was Jesus. And uh, he was the only begotten of the Father, that's Jesus. So, notice what he says about Jesus. Jesus, full of grace and truth. Now, it's not grace and then in addition to grace, truth. It's grace, which is the truth. So he's talking about Jesus. The, uh, the, the grace teaching is just nothing but, uh, it's like an onion. You just peel back layers and it's an unveiling of Jesus. Grace is not just a curriculum. Grace is not just, you know, a subject matter. Grace is a person. His name is Jesus. And the more we begin to peel back the layers we begin to see Jesus with a lot more clarity. So I wanted to show you that Jesus, full of grace, which is the truth. Amen? Amen. Now look at verse 17. Verse 17 says this, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. Grace, which is the truth, came by Jesus. Law by Moses, grace, which is the truth, came by Jesus. Now this demands... Uh, to compare and contrast. This demands, when you, when you contrast something, you, you put them both uh, up so you can see the differences. And so, what is the difference here? What's going on with the law by Moses and the grace by Jesus Christ? You see, whatever, some of the things that are true under the, the law by Moses may not be the truth under the grace that came by Jesus Christ. So it demands for us to compare it. We've got to compare the difference between a servant and a son. We've got to compare the difference between being blessed by what you do and being blessed because of what Jesus has done. 
we, 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 we have to make these comparisons and, and, and to see what is under the law by Moses and what is under the grace by Jesus because what we don't want to do, ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to live our life as if Jesus hadn't died and shed his blood on the cross. So he died and shed his blood on the cross. What changed? What changed? If, if we're still under generational curses, then when did generational blessings show up? So let's look at Romans chapter 6 and 14. And a little bit more, and I'll tell you what we're going to deal here specifically tonight. Romans 6, 14. So there's a law by Moses, then there's the grace by Jesus Christ. I want to show you that because tonight I want to use precision like a surgeon. That when I see the law, I don't want to just say the law. And how many of you know I'm not talking about the law of gravity? I'm not talking about the law that you break in society, you know. You go steal some, Popo going to come get you. You can pray, but you're going to pray in jail because Popo going to come get you. <laughs> I am specifically with precision referring to the law that came by Moses. And the law that came by Moses consists of 613 laws. Ten were written on stone by God. What was that about? 603 were written on tablets. What was that about? And so he says here in Romans chapter 6, 14, we need to locate ourselves and he says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the Mosaic law. So you're not under the Mosaic law, but you're under the grace by Jesus. So what he says is you're not under the law, the Mosaic law, the law that came by Moses. You're under the grace that came by Jesus. See, you're born again. Do you understand that before Jesus died and, 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 and before all of that happened, there were no Christians? For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the Mosaic law. Another thing he says here is that under the Mosaic law, sin had dominion over your life but sin no longer has dominion over you because you're not under the Mosaic law. You're under the grace by Jesus. <laughs> under the Mosaic law, you had to sin because sin had dominion over you. But under grace, you sin because you want to, not because you're made to. <laughs> you go around and ask somebody, well, why do people sin today? Simple, they want to. <laughs> That's the first step to your deliverance, that you got to realize I did that because I wanted to. When I cussed you out, it wasn't the devil that made me do it. <laughs> All right, now let's examine some things here. You know, some people think that under grace, and this is just, you know, when, you know, when God tries to put a revelation in the earth, you know, you get some folks who go way over here and some folks go way deep and then under grace, they say you don't have to come to church and under grace, you don't need to tithe no more and under grace, you ain't got to pray no more. Under grace, you ain't got to do nothing. <laughs> well, that's not true. Amen. So some people think that under grace, morality and good behavior is no longer important to God. That's not true. That's not true. I mean, I, I've heard it. I've, I've, heard, I've heard preachers say, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I understand something. I am, I am determined to do two things, to know Jesus and to show Jesus. Amen. Paul said out of everything, I want to know him. And I want to make sure, you know, God has been dealing with me about making sure that when I teach that I do everything out of love. Uh-oh. <laughs> but, you know, grace doesn't cover you because you sin. Well, well I, I, I'm, I'm under grace, so you can come and commit adultery with me. You cover with my grace. That is the biggest bunch of demonic hogwash ever. Because remember, Jesus is grace. Is Jesus trying to cover your sin? No, he shed his blood so you can go free from that sin, not to cover you while you sin. All right, so that's not true, amen? 
Some people think that under grace there are no laws or no commandments. So when we see that you are not under the law of Moses, people panic as if that's the only law. Under grace, there is a law. Under the covenant of grace, you remember Jesus, there's, he said, there's a new commandment I give you. So there's, there's, there's a commandment, Moses' commandments, but then there's the commandments by Jesus, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. So he kind of substituted 10 commandments and gave you one commandment, and if you keep that one, then you won't do those 10, break those 10. Because if you love, you won't steal. If you love, you won't kill. If you love, you're not going to be able to Ray Ray house with Miss Ray Ray. If you love. All right. So, so my objective tonight is to reveal the believer's freedom in Christ and how we are to live a godly life apart from the governance and the administration of the Mosaic law. How can we live a godly life apart from the governance and the administration of the Mosaic law? Go with me quickly to 2 Timothy chapter 2.15. I'd like to read this in the King James and then the Amplified. 2 Timothy chapter 2.15. And what I'm about to show you is I'm, going to, I'm about to show you the contrast between the Mosaic law versus moral law. Somebody says, what does this have to do with great faith? <laughs> Come back tomorrow. I right, look at this in the King James. Read it with me. Ready, read. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth doesn't mean look up the Greek for it. The verse of scriptures, the application of every verse of scripture is based on the context that it's found in. And so to rightly divide the word is to rightly divide what we just read in John, to rightly divide the law that by, came by Moses versus the grace that came by Jesus, rightly divide those. Now, notice if you don't rightly divide the word, it'll determine how you believe. If you don't rightly divide the word, let's say if you can rightly divide the word, then you can wrongly divide the word. And if you divide it wrong, you're going to believe wrong. And if you believe wrong, you're going to live wrong. But if you rightly divide the word, then you're going to believe right. And when you believe right, you live right. So could it be that some people are living wrong because they're believing wrong because they heard it the wrong way? Are you listening to me? Look at the Amplified real quick. He says, study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God, approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing accurately dividing, rightly handling, and skillfully teaching the word of truth. So if something's wrong in the congregation, it started in the pulpit. I'll leave that alone. So now let's compare in contrast Mosaic law by Moses versus moral law. Here's a synonym you'll see in the scripture for moral law. The law of God. That's moral law. The law of the conscience. That's moral law. So let's look at Mosaic law first, and then let's look at Mosaic law, excuse me, Mosaic law and then moral law, and, and then let's put them together to show you how it works. Now, Romans chapter 3, verse 19 through 20. Romans chapter 3, verse 19 through 20. I'm just going to hit all the high point. Remember, this is an onion. This is one layer, okay? There's lots of layers. It's impossible. I've tried it over the last 10 years to try to peel the whole onion in one section. You can't. Romans 3, 19 through 20. He says, now we know that what things soever the law, the Mosaic law, I want to be precise. Now we know that what's, what things soever the Mosaic law saith, it saith to them who are under the Mosaic law. Well, according to Scripture, God established the covenant of the law with Jewish people. The covenant of the law was established with Jewish people, not with Gentiles. 
So the only people who had claim to the covenant of law by Moses was Jewish people. So if you're not Jewish people, why are you trying to live by something that was not extended to you in the first place? Now, we know that what things soever the Mosaic law said, it said to them who are under the Mosaic law, and the reference he's making here is to who? Jewish people. So he's saying this unto Jewish people that every mouth may be stopped and that all the world may become guilty before God. He says, we don't need another ethnic group to prove that they can't keep 613 of these laws. Look at verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the Mosaic law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the Mosaic law, here's what happens by the Mosaic law, is the knowledge of sin. By the, so, so the purpose of the Mosaic law was to reveal sin and the condemnation that comes when you can't keep it. The purpose of the Mosaic law is to reveal sin and the condemnation that comes when you can't keep it. So, you know, somebody says, well, I can keep it. Listen, there's 613 of them. You don't know 613 of them. <laughs> you only heard about the 10 and you don't know all those. <laughs> the deal is you have to keep all of the commandments. And James 2.10 says, if you violate just one of them, then you're guilty of violating all of them. And for most of us, 4th of July on the pork ribs, So what was the purpose of the Mosaic law? It was to show you what was wrong with you. The Mosaic law operated, or the Mosaic law, it was like a mirror. It would show you your reflection. It will show you what's going on with you, but, won't, but, but will not lift a hand to do anything about it. The Mosaic law was like medical dye. You shoot it in your body, the dye is not the cure. It won't cure anything. It just shows you what's wrong. The Mosaic law just shows you what's wrong. It has no transformative power. The Mosaic law has no transformative power. The Ten Commandments have no transformative power. It was given and designed to show you what's wrong with you. These are bold statements, but I don't have time. All right, look at this. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. This was just really strange for anybody that would kind of defend what I just said. If you'll look at 1 Corinthians 15, 56, read it out loud with me. He says, the sting of death is sin. Are you kidding me? He says, this is what strengthens sin, the Mosaic law. You show me a man who is trying his best through the merit system of trying to keep the Mosaic law, and if he's willing to take the covers off, I'll show you that he is struggling with sin somewhere in his life. Because that was the purpose for it. The, per the, the, the Mosaic law does not hmm, give you the advantage over sin. The Mosaic law gives sin the advantage over you. The Mosaic law was given to strengthen sin. Think of that. Strengthen sin. The Mosaic law was given to give sin the advantage over your life, to increase sin over your life, to bring about condemnation, to bring about shame, to bring about guilt, to destroy you and to make your life miserable, to bring you to a point where you'll finally come to the end of your self-righteousness and your self-effort and fall down on your bended knees and declare, I need help. I need a Savior, Jesus. The Mosaic law is perfect in self-righteousness. 
You can go around and say you hadn't committed adultery. You can go around saying you hadn't stole. You hadn't, you hadn't done anything. Well, it's perfect in self-righteousness because the Mosaic law will have you comparing yourself amongst yourself, and then you'll go around and say, well, I'm, I don't do anything wrong. I, 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 I never looked at movies with cuss words in it. I, 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 I've, I've never smoked cigarettes. I don't smoke weed, cigarette, or nothing. I, I, I do nothing. I hold my temper. I, 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 I don't drink coffee. I, I, don't, I don't even look at my naked body when I get out of the shower. I do none of that stuff. But now the bigger problem is now you are self-righteous. Look at Romans 7, verse 12 through 14. Let's look at this in the New Living Translation, if you would. So it's going to show you the nature of the law. Romans 7, 12 through 14 in the New Living Trans Translation. Now, what is the nature of the law? Because as you hear me talk, you could possibly think that the law is bad. No. Look what he says, verse 12. But still the law itself is holy. Its commands are holy. The law is right. It's good. I said it's good. Amen. Verse 13. But how can that be? Did the law which is good cause my death? Of course not. Sin used what was good to bring about my condemnation to death. So we can see how terrible sin really is. It uses God's good commandments for its own evil uh, purposes. 14. So the trouble is not with the law. Listen to me carefully. The trouble is not with the law that came from God. Here's the trouble. The trouble is with fallen man. The law, the King James says, is spiritual, but he says fallen man is carnal. And for a carnal fallen man to try to keep something so flawless and perfect, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem because no matter how long they can do good, eventually they're going to do something He said, we got to fix something. We got to fix it. Now, watch this now. So, if we'll look at the Apostle Paul, he's a perfect example because if you go to Galatians chapter 1 and verse 11 through 16, examine Paul because Paul was, uh, was trained as a Pharisee. Uh, Paul was very radical and zealous of Judaism and the Mosaic law. In fact, what I don't think a lot of people understand, Paul, yes, he persecuted the church because he, that, he was persecuting the church trying to keep the law. And if you did certain things, it required judgment. If you picked up sticks on the Sabbath day, you were supposed to be stoned to death. So Paul felt like, well, what I'm doing is not persecuting the church. What I am doing, I'm doing it as a radical Pharisee trying to carry out the law of God. Mm. Are you with me? So let's examine him because he went from, from being a radical, zealous guy who was uh, zealous and radical about the Mosaic law and, and the Jews' religion, which was Judaism, and he turned on a dime and began to preach the gospel that Jesus revealed to him on the, on the road to Damascus. All right, now watch this, verse 11. He says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Now, I, I got to figure out what gospel he's talking about because you've got the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You've got the gospel of the kingdom. So what gospel is he talking about here? Well, go, look at, uh, go to back, fact, go back to Galatians chapter 1, and you look at verse 6. He said, marvel, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. He's making reference to the grace of Christ or the gospel of grace. So when he defines gospel here, Paul is preaching this unmerited good news of, 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 of the unmerited favor of God. Paul is talking about this almost too good to be true news about the finished works of Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about this good news that you can receive by faith what Jesus has already done. 
<laughs> By faith, you're already healed because you're already healed 2,000 years ago. See, we need, to, we need to be careful about our tense. We keep trying to get God to do when it's done. You're trying to get God to heal you when he healed you. You're trying to get victory when you got victory. And you're not going from defeat to victory. Jesus, Jesus won, gave you the victory. So every move you make is from victory to victory. You're never moving from defeat. You're always moving from victory to victory to victory. So you got to quit. You got to quit looking at God like, God, I need you to do this. Heaven saying, I've done that, received that, believed that, and moved from victory to victory. You are never going to be in defeat another day in your life. Jesus has put you in the victory lane. It seems that everyone is looking for success in life, but lots of people are having a hard time finding it. Well, God's children have an edge, the Holy Spirit. In this four-message series, The Holy Spirit, Your Unseen Partner, Creflo Dollar gives us the benefits of having a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. You can know everything the Bible talks about and still not be successful in everyday life. You need the Holy Spirit. He is a game changer. Now, in this new covenant, it's about trusting the Holy Spirit to do the things that you've tried to do by yourself and you've not been successful. He is your helper. He is your unseen partner. Get your series today for a love gift of just $25 U.S. plus shipping and handling. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore or call the number on your screen now to order your copy today. Are you searching for direction or just need a word from God? Join the World Changers Nation for service every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Together, we're understanding grace and empowering change. Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about our services and streaming times. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. Have you ever wondered how the financial support from our viewers makes a difference in people's lives? We receive testimonies every day from people whose lives have been shattered by natural disasters, failed marriages, bankrupt businesses, and so on. They share how our outreach efforts and messages about God's grace have changed their lives in a tangible way. And for that, we give God all the glory. Today, I invite you to prayerfully consider financially supporting this ministry. We know you'll be empowered to see real change in others and prosper in your own life. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.